discussed earlier that there are lipid soluble hormone and water soluble hormone. Now let's look at their mechanism of action. First, let's look at lipid soluble hormone or a steroid hormone. So on top right here, this is a signaling cell and the one at the bottom here, this is a target cell. So the signaling cell secretes signaling molecule, which is hormone. Due to its solubility in lipid, it can simply cross the lipid bilayer. However, it is insoluble in water and insoluble in plasma, thus require the transport protein or a carrier protein in order to be transported in the blood. So it will then carry it in the blood by the transport protein to reach the target cell. So once reach the target cell, the hormone then dissociate from transport protein and pass through the plasma membrane. Inside the cell, this hormone will bind to the receptor on cytoplasm or cytoplasmic receptor or it can bind to the receptor inside the nucleus or a nuclear receptor and both will form hormone receptor complex. So these two types of a receptor we call as an intracellular receptor because it is located inside the cells. Just right here, this is a cytoplasmic receptor and this is a nuclear receptor. Right, so now hormone receptor complex or that have formed then move to the nucleus and bind to a specific region on the DNA. This will activate or repress a transcription of a gene that will eventually provide a cytoplasmic response. So we have learned before that activations of a gene will um, produce a mRNA. And this mRNA would be transported to cytoplasm, then undergo process of a translation. So translations here will then um, produce enzyme okay, or other protein okay, that can carry out the response. Okay. So in the lipid soluble hormone, yeah, what you have to remember, number one, they can simply cross the lipid bilayer, which is here, and uh, they require this transport protein to be transported in the blood. They have um, the receptor binding inside the cell, intracellular receptor can be on the cytoplasmic or can be inside the nucleus. Now we look at water soluble hormone or a peptide hormone. So in the signaling cell, this hormone enclosed in the vesicle and secreted by exocytosis. Due to its solubility in plasma, this hormone can travel freely in the bloodstream to reach the target cell. However, once reach the target cell, they cannot simply diffuse through the plasma membrane. Thus, it needs to bind to the cell surface receptor or a receptor on the plasma membrane. So the binding then trigger a cellular response, which number one can cause changes in the cytoplasmic response, in the cytoplasmic molecule, or sometimes it can alter the gene transcription okay, that will lead to the cytoplasmic response. So this chains of event that convert extracellular chemical signal to a specific intracellular response is what we call as a signal transduction, which means binding of a signal on the outside of the cells then will trigger specific series of event inside the cells okay, that we call as a signal transduction. So now, as you can see in the water soluble hormone, number one in the signaling cell, it is enclosed in the vesicle. 
it does not need the uh, carrier protein or the transport protein to be able uh, to be transported in the blood and the most important thing it need to bind to the cell surface receptor on the target cells Signal transduction is a series of events that convert extracellular chemical signal to a specific intracellular response. So, transduction or transduce means to convert the signal outside the cell to a response inside the cell. We will consider epinephrine as an example. Epinephrine is a water-soluble hormone or known as adrenaline released by the adrenal gland in a stressful situation. It regulates many organs including the liver and one of the response is in sugar metabolism where it helps to raise blood glucose level. So this is the response of epinephrine which is to increase blood glucose level. So now we are going to look what are the mechanisms involved. So once you reach the target cell, so this is a target cell, this hormone or epinephrine bind to the G protein coupled receptor which is the receptor on the cell surface that located on the plasma membrane of a target cell. And this binding of a G on the G protein couple receptor will then activate G protein. G protein here indicates uh, guanosine because it will bind to the GTP once activated. And G protein will then change shape that allow it to bind and activate adenylyl cyclase. Activations of the adenylyl cyclase will then cause conversion, it catalyze the conversions of ATP to CAMP or cyclic AMP. So cyclic AMP here act as a second messenger. So functions of a G protein to shuttle the signal between the receptor to the second messenger. Next, CMP, CAMP will then relay a signal. It will activate protein kinase or some other protein that will lead to a response. CAMP here will bind to the protein kinase A and activate this protein that will then promote glycogen breakdown. Okay? It will inhibit glycogen synthesis and not uh, producing any of the glycogen and then promote breakdown of a glycogen. So glycogen breakdown will be broken down to a glucose. Then this will increase the blood glucose level okay, which will then uh, release to the blood. So this is the mechanism on how epinephrine cause the liver cell to secrete glucose during fight or flight response. So it will also um, cause another response such as it will affect on the gene activity it will alter the metabolism such as in this example or it can also cause opening or closing of the ion channel